This is part two. If you haven't seen part one, I recommend you go back and watch that first. The fourth leg goes from Stromfregen Bridge to the summit of Ben Brack, past Polskirch and Polgowan, and finishes in Sankar. It's another glorious day. I've got a short section on the road of a couple of hundred metres. And then after that, uh, back onto single track. My partner Ian and Rusty, the trail dog, they are going to accompany me up to the summit of Ben Brack, which is probably about six or seven k away. Oh, geez, it's really boggy already. Thank you. Well, that didn't take long till I was walking. <laughs> Has to say, this is not easy cycling. I'm so glad I've got my GPS. There's so many wee quad bike tracks here. Uh, it's difficult to tell where you should be going but I can see the next post ahead up by that tree Well, I hope the path starts to get better it's, uh, Just to give you an idea of how hard I'm working My heart rate is at 158 and I'm more or less on the flat it's just so difficult to keep going Not to mention all these bogs There's Ian and the trail dog ahead of me It's just such slow going with a bike You actually would be quicker walking without your bike Ah, the familiar bracken Well, I really hope things improve Because this is not fun at all It's taken me 32 minutes to do 2.2k I have come all the way up from the house that's down there and then I've been making my way up through these fields and it'll be good to get into the forest uh, be a bit cooler for a start and the trail should improve Oh, it's so good to be on the Land Rover track for a bit <laughs> I've caught up here in Rusty uh, and I'm sure once I hit the next climb on the, the single track I'm sure they'll catch me up just having some of my cashew nuts there so I just try to keep eating little and often I'm not one of these people that can uh, head off for the day with a couple of energy bars and that does them for the day I find that I really need to eat because I seem to burn through my fuel very very quickly up there is where I'm heading so believe it or not, that's only one and a half k away but it sure looks like a lot further Well, this bit's good I can ride this Just about to leave the forest You can see behind me uh, where I'll be going
just getting a quick bite to eat here. I'm pretty hungry after that climb and hopefully the trail improves. On the hill, away up there, you can just see the sculpture in the moor. So that's how far I've come. I tell you what though, I now understand why a lot of people have tried this and then quit. This has been the worst day so far. And I've got an awful long way to go. So best keep moving. I think I should almost be at the top here and then I think I'm more or less taking a 90 degree turn to the left I tell you what, this is not easy I've done more walking today than I have riding That's just over 3 hours since I started I've done 12k and 512 metres of ascent This stone monument is called Allen's Cairn. It is in memory of two Covenanters killed in the 1680s because they refused to change their religion. I'm going to be heading along the trail ahead of me here and that will take us on to a forest road. Oh, got the limbo bars here. No, <laughs> I'm not going to get through there. Ow. There we go. This is much drier here, which is very welcome. Tell you what else is welcome. <laughs> this track. Oh, got a wee bothy here. Well, skier. Ah, wasn't expecting to be here quite so soon. This road's a welcome sight. Just keeping my eyes peeled on this bit, I will be going off to the left and doing another couple of K contouring, kind of around a hill, a wee bit of up. And then it should be downhill after that into Sanka. Here we go, I can see the coast all the way up the hillside there. 
Well, it's certainly not getting any easier. Just need to keep telling myself, Claire, you've got this. Keep going. By this point, I was starting to get really tired. These painted, colourful posts were a welcome sight. They really brightened up my mood. I continued on turning the pedals. It wasn't long until I was pushing the bike again. However, I did pass more and more colourful posts. This is where I've come from. Can you see a path? No, neither can I. At least the scenery was fantastic. Ahead here is where I'm going next. I'm really hoping that just over this rise, I'll be able to descend. I was really hoping by the time I got to here, then it would be plain sailing. But no, I'm down and then up again, and then it should be the final bit. I wrestled my way through more gates. It can be quite awkward when it's windy, trying to hold the gate and get your bike through without the gate closing on you. I have no words. The tank is almost empty. But I suppose I better keep going. Oh jeez. Don't know why I'm bothering now. Feet are already soaking. You can just see the, the tip of the yellow post just up on the horizon there. when you're already tired. Finally, I was on to the start of the downhill. I was soon on to a well-surfaced track. This wasn't shown on the OS map, so it must be new. I could have stayed on this track and raced down to Sankar. However, it wasn't the true route. My arms were really tired from all the pushing. I really struggled to lift my bike over the fence. I think the pedal caught on the wire. I wearily stepped over the stile. According to the GPS, got 6k to go. The trail didn't improve. The same bog and marsh sections were present the whole way down. In fact, on some sections, I had to pedal to go downhill because there was so much resistance on my tyres. Just you stay where you are, Mr Bull. Just you stay where you are. Thank goodness for that. It was some size. I could not believe it. There was yet another style. This was very difficult to negotiate. The top step on the stile was very narrow, which made turning round at the top very difficult without overbalancing and falling off. That's handy, gate's locked. Thankfully, I'm now on a decent track. Almost into Sankar now. Just making the decision whether I want to keep going or not. So I'm just going to meet Ian and Rusty and decide what I'm doing. Decided to call it a day here. Done about 35k, uh, over 900 metres of climb. And I don't think it would be sensible to try and do another 16k with a lot more climbing. Uh, so, yeah, to be continued. The fifth leg starts at Sankar 
and climbs up and over to Wanlock Head. It then climbs up Lowther Hill, Cold Moss, Coombe Head and finishes in Over Fingland. Next leg, here we come. I'm just making my way out of Sankar. Got dropped off again and I'm hoping to get to Brattleburn today. Full disclosure, since the fourth leg, which almost broke me, I have had about a week off. Uh, we've both been busy working as well, uh, but it was definitely needed to recover physically and uh, mentally as well. You'll probably notice I have changed my bike after the previous leg with so much bog and trails like this. The other bike with narrower tyres was just creating so much friction because the tyres sink in. Whereas with a fat bike, not only do you have a wider tyre, but uh, you can run them around 10 psi is what I run mine sometimes less and that just gives you a bigger contact patch with the ground widthwise and also lengthwise on the tyre so it spreads your weight and your load over a bigger area which means that you don't sink down well I'm pleased with that I've managed to ride all of that so far no chance on the other bike that's for sure there is a style, but there's no need, because there's no wire. Looks pretty steep up ahead there. I think I might be pushing that. According to the GPS, probably only got about half a K until I think I reached the top. Just bumped into a walker there, who's walking the Southern Upland Way, but in the other direction. And he tells me, once I'm up and over this rise here, then it'll be good for me because it's downhill. So looking forward to that. I paused to enjoy the views. I looked back to where I had come from. back there I can either stick to this Land Rover track which is probably about 5k longer or I could have turned off and gone about two and a half k over open hill and then maybe a k and a half downhill uh, so I went and had a wee look and there's bracken so that was my decision made at least I know I can ride everything when I'm on a, a surface track quite a climb up ahead not sure if you can see all the way up there to the left so this is the designated route uh, I think this is maybe for if there's bad weather rather than going over the open hill you can come this way instead it's very uh, undulating so lots of up lots of down but so far I've done 9k and 372 metres of ascent. This looks like a locked gate. It was disappointing to find three locked gates in a row. 
and there weren't any styles either. It's such a shame that some landowners choose not to follow the outdoor access code. I'm going all the way down and that track you can see in the distance straight ahead we're going all the way back up This bit was steeper than it looks Made it to Wanlock Head which is good so i am now got a monstrous climb ahead of me uh, and also some steps just ahead. Wanlock Head is Scotland's highest village. It sits at a height of 405 metres. I'm going all the way up to that giant golf ball or radar station. So the Southern Upland Way is on the road for a wee bit and then it kind of cuts the corners and crisscrosses the road a wee bit. I'm now on 20k with 735 metres of ascent. So that's, that's a lot of climb in a short distance. I wasn't anywhere near reaching the summit, but already I was already higher than a lot of the surrounding terrain. It was slow going but I was thankful for this good surfaced tarmac road. The higher I climbed, the more spectacular the views became. I had views out to the coast. Almost there. That bench has got my name on it. The Southern Upland Way officially cuts off just here. It's important to keep refuelling. I enjoyed a prawn mayo sandwich. I was soon on my way again. I had a little bit to go. I now have about 6 or 7k on the open hill and some great descents and then climbs again. I think three different descents and three different climbs back up. Oh, that's cool. Welcome to the lunchbox weather shelter, Southern Upland Way. So it's just a wee place to shelter if the weather's really bad. This was my last glimpse of the radar station before I start to descend. That's Deer Reservoir in the distance. I'll be heading there on the next leg. And just now, I'm heading down this small path. I climbed to a height of just around 700 metres. Uh, so I will have a lot of descending to do. In fact, <laughs> I'll be going all the way down here and all the way back up there. Well, this certainly beats walking after all the exertion on the way up. I'm pleased with myself, I managed to ride that whole thing without stopping, other than to set the camera up once. That's where I've come from. You can see the trail, it descends quite steeply. And then I've been making my way back up here. And I think when I reach that post up there, uh, hopefully that's the highest point and then it should maybe plateau for a bit and then be downhill. Quick push up here. Another huge big bit of bog.
I stopped a few times on the downhill to enjoy the views. Sometimes that can be hard to do. You can see the golf ball is way behind me there, just on the horizon. I mean, look at the views. Spectacular. I mean, when you get the weather in Scotland, this is the place to be. Wow. Deep here. Oh yeah. What else? Just in front here, uh, about there, you can't even see the path because it gets so steep. And then the bad news is, I've got to go all the way up that wall line on the other side. Let's hit down this bit in one piece. Looked at the map, so that is the final pull up there. And then it kind of flattens out a bit. And then I think it's only about a K down to the road. Jeez, oh, that is well steep from down here. I really don't think the camera can do it justice, just how steep this is. It was only afterwards that I realised on the map, on this section, there were contour lines missing. There's only one reason for that, and that's because there's physically not enough space on the map to put all the contour lines in. This is because it's very, very steep. And don't I know it. That's where I've come from. All the way up there. <laughs> and that's where I'm going. This section was steeper again. I couldn't physically push my bike directly up the hill. I had to resort to lifting it in front of me and then working my feet up. And then repeating this again and again. I was glad to be able to ride my bike again, even if the riding was technical. Oh, what's this? <laughs> wow. Oh, I found a hoard. Oh, I'm delighted with that. Wallace Hall Primary School. Last few kilometres to go. You can see it following the wall line and the fence all the way down there. And then I'll be onto the road and I'm just onto the road for about a K. And I've decided to stop just down at the main road. Uh, there's a good lay-by for being collected. That's taken me almost five hours and I got a late start today. 1,094 metres of ascent and 27K. Hard to see here, I'm casting my own shadow. Well, there's no doubt about it. I've definitely been able to ride an awful lot more today. I think mostly due to the bike.
no idea where I'm supposed to be going here. Path has disappeared. Yeah, there are some bits where the sign is just, just non-existent, particularly coming down to the road past farms and stuff. Oh yeah, barbed wire. Good okay. Right, a bit of key on the road. Made it to the lay-by just waiting to be picked up and I'll see you on the next leg. This leg takes us past Dare Reservoir, over Sweetshaw Bray and Hodds Hill. It then heads southeast towards Beatuk and finishes in Moffat. Good morning! I am back at the very same lay-by and I'm setting off for the next leg. Bit of a change to the weather, it is freezing today. Turning right here, here we go. Ian and Rusty are driving round to Beatuk and they are going to park there and walk in towards Rattleburn and probably meet me there. So you can see up there in the cloud, that's where the radar station is, the golf ball. So I had come all the way down that ridge up and down and then down towards the wee house there and then along the road to here. And I'm heading towards Dare Reservoir. Uh, so I think I've got about 5k kind of through the forest here and then out on Topen Hill. Pretty boggy already. Be good if I could keep my feet dry today. Just leaving the forest. You can just see it behind me there. And that's the rain on properly. But I'm actually so hot from doing the climbing that if I put my jacket on I'll be roasting. I'm on a pretty decent track now, which is good. According to this post here, this is the halfway point. Southern Auckland Way, halfway, 107 miles. Just let you see the views, even though it is cloudy and a bit wet, I mean, the views are still fantastic. I've come up through the forest there, and it's all been rideable so far. Not impressed. Apologies for the inconvenience, the core paths at Deer Reservoir will be closed between the 3rd of the 6th 24 and the 30th of the 8th 24 for essential works. Well we're now into October and it's still going. Follow the temporary diversion. So I should be going, I don't know if you can see the map here, but I should be going along the top of the dam. Uh, but I've probably got to do two or three times the length of a diversion. And you can guarantee it ain't going to be a good path. This is our diversion, up round these trees here.
Just turned the corner round the forest edge there and keeping going all the way to that corner and then I think I kind of strike diagonally uh, up onto the hill. There's the wind turbines over there generating plenty of power today. This section was really awkward. It was challenging to keep my balance and remain upright. I don't know if you can see, but that's the dam over there. And down here is where I'm now signposted up this hill. Uh, so on their map, they actually had you continuing along the fence line to get to the dam, but that's not correct because the signposts uh, put you up here. And I'm hoping this is going to take me to the wall over there. And if you're wondering, yes, my feet are soaking. I have come up all the way around the trees there and then up this slope. And it's pretty steep now. I'm continuing up here. It's a bit of a slog, so I'm hoping to get up to the wall line above me. Here is Dare Reservoir. So, yeah, nice views, even if it is raining. Unfortunately, I'm on the wrong side of the wall. So I followed this track up, or path up, but see there's a stile probably about 300 metres down the wall line that you're obviously supposed to cross, uh, but there are no wayposts or anything to send you in that direction. So if you happen to be walking this, or you're crazy enough to cycle it, the style is down there. So I'm just going to have to lift over this fence and lift over the wall, I think. Right, fence done. The wall might be a bit of a mission. <sighs> Come on! So there is actually a crossing stone there. It brightened up for a moment. This allowed me to have some reasonable views of Deer Reservoir, even if it was cloudy. The trail continues all the way up this wall line. After that, it continues along this ridge line into the forest and then it shouldn't be too far to the bothy from there. Yay! Finally a bit I can ride! But for how long is the question? tell you how slippy that style was. That's lethal! Oh jeez. I'm so glad I have my fat bike today. This would be completely unrideable on my other bike with its skinny tyres. That looks like a long way. I think in reality it's maybe only 3k. Well, I'm pleasantly surprised as to how much of this is actually rideable. Albeit slowly, but uh, better than slogging through the wet bog with your feet. Too steep to ride this bit. Pushing my bike up this hill into the wind made this climb even harder. I've come all the way up this fence line. You can see the track disappearing there. I've got a bit of down and then up to that high point ahead. This is the summit of Hodds Hill at 568 metres. I was glad to be descending to get out of this ferocious wind. It was very chilling. 
definitely have to concentrate though. <laughs> ah, float across the bog. <laughs> Looks like it might be about to get pretty steep up ahead. Yeah, this is really, really steep. One k kind of up to the top of that hill up ahead in front, and then we're into the forest. Plenty of sheep poo about anyway. Seems to be all pinging off my tires at speed. That is why I always wear glasses on the bike. Plenty more bog by lots of things. I have come from here through that forest and then I have come all the way along these tops and then down to this forest and back up again. And I will very shortly be heading into the forest just round the corner. That's me done 11k and it's taken 2 hours 21 so far. Uh, most of that I was able to ride, I did have to push up some bits that were too steep, but it's going well so far. So long may that continue. What's confusing me now is that there's been a lot of forest that's actually been cut down. So although it shows on my GPS we're going into forest, we're not really. I am going to be absolutely ringing by the time I get to the bottom here. I've been hoping to stay reasonably clean and dry given that I'm staying in a hotel tonight. Be too far from the bothy now. Here we go. Brattleburn bothy. Here we go. <laughs> Boy, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Yes. If you come to rescue us, I think we've got to have the <laughs> <laughs> you and your stick, see Rusty? This bothy is very well kitted out. There are a number of sleeping platforms. There is a bookcase with plenty of books, should the weather be really bad. And there is also a log burning stove. I was soon on my way again, keen to get warmed up after getting so cold on the descent. This is the path out here, through the trees, and then back onto the Southern Upland Way. This is us back onto the Southern Upland Way again. Be good to do some climbing and actually get warmed up again. Just got to get up to the top of this next rise up here. That was the top of Craig Hill, and after that I should be able to ride the downhill. Looks pretty steep though. Before we disappear down the hill, and we can't see this, I have come from this hill here. Uh, I've dropped down off that, back up behind the trees which are just there, and from there come down all the way down into Brattleburn and then all the way back up here. This is the summit of Craig Hill, although you can't really see much. Uh, it's mostly trees and you can see a little bit further behind me there. So the height of this is 361 metres. I was keen to start the descent. Hello boys! <laughs> Hi pal! Boy, yes! I missed you! <laughs> Rusty and Ian are heading home tonight and they will come and pick me up tomorrow. Hopefully I'll make it to St Mary's Loch tomorrow.
I made my way through the sheep fields. Look at the lovely red berries on those round trees. They're so vivid. The weather seems to have brightened up, which is good. It's starting to dry off a little bit. They just can't beat the peace and quiet and tranquility. Oh dear. I thought I'd left all this bracken behind me. I'm enjoying this. This is great. I've done just over 20k and about 640 metres of climbing and over 700 uh, descent. That milestone said two and a half miles to beat it. It's good to be on the road for a bit. That is the M74 motorway, so that is the main road south from Scotland into England and just up above that to the left is Moffat and that's where I'll be heading. That's our sign and going through these gates. Probably here it's pretty noisy now, the motorway is just over to our left. I passed underneath the motorway. Reached Moffat. Uh, I'm just a little bit early uh, to check in, got five or ten minutes. So I'm just sitting here next to the War Memorial, which is quite nice. So that's been 30k and 700 odd metres of ascent, I think. I checked in to the Buclou Arms Hotel for the night. The hotel was very well set up. It had picnic tables round the back and also bike lockers. It even had washing facilities, so I gave my bike a quick once over. It really needed it. I enjoyed a fabulous dinner and dessert before turning in for the night.